morning, everybody. I'm going to finish up today at uh, 28.1. It'll be a pretty short lesson today. And then I'll assign the homework from 28.1. So yesterday we left off talking about the nervous system, I think. I think we got this one down. So we'll go on to the new system today, the endocrine system. So the endocrine system includes all glands that secrete chemical messengers, also called hormones. For example, the pineal gland secretes melatonin. And that's a hormone that tells you it's time to go to bed. The pituitary gland secretes growth hormone that helps you grow. Thyroid gland secretes thyroid hormone, it helps with metabolism. So these are all of the glands associated with the endocrine system. You don't have to write these down, just for your information. So I mentioned some of these. We'll go through a few others. So there's the, the pancreas. That secretes insulin. That helps with blood sugar levels. If you have diabetes, it might not be working properly. You might have too much or too little insulin. The adrenal glands secrete adrenaline. So if you're excited, if you're playing a sport, adrenaline helps you, uh, you know, either react to danger or to perform better in a sport. So again, you don't need to write down all the glands, just write down the first bullet point on here and just know, you know, just in general, that there are many glands that make up the system. The next system is a circulatory system. This includes the heart, arteries, veins, capillaries, and blood. So you can see in here in red, those are the arteries and they carry blood away from the heart. And then you can see that, you know, it circulates through the system. So the arteries carry blood away from the heart to the organs, but then the blood returns through the veins and they're in blue. So the ones that are in blue are veins and they carry blood back to the heart. So this blood that is red comes straight from the lungs. So it's full of oxygen and blood that has a lot of oxygen is, is bright red. And then it goes to the organs and dumps off oxygen to the organs and picks up carbon dioxide. So when it comes back to the heart, it doesn't have much oxygen left. And over time it loses its red color now, it won't become blue though. You know, it looks blue through our skin, but that's an illusion, just like the sky looks to be blue to us. It's because of the light reflecting off our skin that makes it look like we have blue veins. We really don't. So the blood that comes back to the heart is gonna be dark. So if you ever had a really deep wound, your blood might look almost black. You know, it looks a very dark red color. And so that's blood that's not oxygenated. It has very little oxygen in it. Blood that's bright red has a lot of oxygen present, but it will never become blue. It, it will just go from bright red to dark red. So as I mentioned, blood transports gases, oxygen throughout the organs, and then picks up carbon dioxide to return to the lungs, picks up nutrients, hormones and waste, and it carries them to where they're needed. So the capillaries are very small blood vessels. Arteries and veins are the largest ones and they get smaller and smaller. And capillaries are about one blood cell in diameter thick. So a single blood cell squeezes through the capillaries in here. And you'll find capillaries in every organ. It allows oxygen to be exchanged with carbon dioxide. It picks up waste, gives off sugar and nutrients to the organs. So when you eat food, 
the food is digested and the nutrients are absorbed through the capillaries. So as it passes through the intestine, the capillaries pick up the nutrients from the food as well as water. So that's how your body gets water and, and nutrients from food. It's by the blood system picking up the food and the water and the nutrients as it goes through the intestine. And then some water goes to the kidneys and the kidneys will take out the waste. The next system is the immune system. And this consists of white blood cells, the thymus gland, which is in your throat right here, and the spleen. And that's on the left-hand side of your body. Protects against disease, stores and makes white blood cells. So the thymus gland, as you get older, it, it shrinks in size. And by your teens, it's pretty much not working anymore. When you're a child, it's its biggest. And the thymus gland is basically the school for white blood cells. The thymus gland teaches the white blood cells how to look for things that buy that are foreign to it. And uh, the things that are foreign, white blood cells are going to destroy. So anything like pollen, fungus, bacteria, viruses, they're going to destroy. And they're trained to know what is part of the body and what's not part of the body. The thymus gland trains them to do that. But as you get older, you build up your immune system, the thymus gland doesn't need to work as it used to, and so it shrinks and turns into fat as you get older. The spleen stores white blood cells. It also breaks down old red blood cells. So certain infections that you have, you might have in a large spleen, like mono, for example. Um, when you have mono, you have a larger spleen than normal because there's a lot of white blood cells piling up in the spleen. Some infections you have uh, as a side effect of that, you have a large spleen because of the white blood cells that are being destroyed from the infection. All that's on green in here is a lymph system. So lymph is a fluid that goes through the body, kind of like the blood system does, but its job is to clean up, to carry away diseases, bacteria and viruses. White blood cells travel through here and the nodes right here is where there's a, a buildup of white blood cells. So if you're sick, sometimes the doctor's gonna feel below your throat right here, below your chin. And what they're feeling for is swollen lymph nodes. If you have um, a cold, you might have swollen lymph nodes. And that's a sign of an infection. Tonsils are also part of the system and tonsils job is to hold white blood cells to fight up infection. If you have an infection, they might get swollen. Another common area for lymph nodes is your armpits. And so if you have certain infections, the two places that you might have swelling would be below your chin and in your armpits, where the white blood cells just pile up and, and clog up the system. Digestive system. So you receive food from the outside and it breaks it down into simpler molecules. So up here in the mouth, um, the purple, those are salivary glands and saliva helps start breaking down the food. The esophagus is the tube that takes the food to the stomach. You can see on here that the green structure is the gallbladder. Uh, that secretes bile into the stomach and that helps break down fat. So gallbladders can be removed through surgery if they're infected or you, if you have stones. And you can live without a gallbladder. It's just, you, you know, fatty food can upset your stomach because the gallbladder helps digest fat. The liver secretes bile and brings it to the gallbladder to store, and then bile is then secreted into the stomach. The liver breaks down toxins as well. 
um, pancreas right here, it secretes digestive enzymes into the stomach to help break down the food. And the food goes from the stomach to the small intestine first. And there's about 22 feet of the small intestine. And after that goes to the large intestine, and there's about eight feet of the large intestine before it's expelled from the body. So as it goes along here, there's capillaries that pick up all the nutrients and pick up water too. So as the food goes to the intestine, the body is picking up nutrients through the blood system. And at the very end, as it nears the end in the large intestine, there isn't much nutrients left. It's mostly waste at this point. So materials that are not absorbed are transported back to the outside, and that would just be waste products. So it travels along here for several hours, you know, usually about eight to 12 hours, depending upon the food you have. Um, foods like fat are, are longer to digest than things like sugar. <clears throat> So this is all the structures that are included in the, in the system. You don't need to write these down, it's just for information. And we went through most of these. So let's go on to the next slide. Respiratory system moves air in and out. It exchanges gases between the blood and the air. So the job of here um, in, inside your lungs is to take an oxygen to the blood system and remove carbon dioxide. And so the capillaries that are inside the lungs, you, know, you see them are here in red and blue, they surround alveoli. It looks like a grape cluster, but these are little air sacs. And so air is brought into the alveoli and the capillaries surround the alveoli and they take out carbon dioxide and expel it into the lungs that you then expel out through your breath. And they take in oxygen so the blue veins are going to dump off carbon dioxide to the lungs. And then they pick up oxygen, they become red. So on this slide, again, you don't need to write down the last bullet point, um, just the first two on here, just the functions of the system. So the pharynx would be your throat. Larynx is your windpipe, and then trachea further down. Then you have bronchial tubes that branch off into your two lungs, and they become smaller. They become little air sacs called alveoli. So if you have bronchitis, that's an infection of these tubes right here. The excretory system eliminates waste products. It's also called the urinary systems. Your book though calls excretory, but you might see in other books as urinary system. So you can see on here that the kidneys are filtering out waste and water from the blood system. So the blood system is going to pass to the kidneys and the kidneys are going to pick up excess water and waste. And then from the kidneys, the waste goes down through the ureter to the bladder. And so there's tubes that drain from the kidneys to the bladder, and the tubes carry liquid waste, mostly full of water. And the bladder holds the waste, and then urethra would be the opening of the bladder. So a urinary infection can become a kidney infection. You know, in your urinary infection would be down here, but the infection could travel up the ureter to the kidneys and become a kidney infection, which is much more serious because you know the kidneys filter out waste and toxins. So if they don't work, you won't live for very long. Urinary infection is not very serious, but it can become serious if it isn't treated 
and it passes up into the kidneys. And then kidney stones can happen where if you're dehydrated especially, you can have this buildup of calcium, which is very much like a, a stone. And these stones can block the ureters and they can be stuck in here, which is very painful. And in which case you would not be able to eliminate the waste from the kidney. So as I mentioned in the last slide, kidneys remove waste from blood. They maintain proper water and electrolyte concentrations. So kidneys are going to eliminate waste. They're going to maintain the right water concentration in your body. So if you have too much water in your blood, then you're going to filter that out through the kidneys. If you're dehydrated, the kidneys are going to hold on to the water and keep it in your blood system. Electrolytes would be things like sodium and potassium, and these are important throughout your body for cell maintenance, for cells working properly, for muscles and nerves functioning properly. And when you sweat, you lose both water and electrolytes. And that's why, you know, if you're an athlete and you're losing a lot of sweat, you want to replenish not just water, but also electrolytes. If you just drink water, you actually can make things worse and not better because you might need electrolytes you're not getting. And so it's important to replace not just the water, but also the electrolytes. <clears throat> and that's why some athletes drink Gatorade, Powerade, or even pickle juice, because all those contain sodium and potassium that they've lost through their sweat. And then the product of all this is urine. And so the liquid waste that the kidneys expel is urine. It's mostly water, but it does contain some waste like ammonia and urea that the, that's from the blood that could be poisonous to the body. The last system is reproductive system, and this is what produces offspring. And so for the female reproductive system, the ovary is what creates an egg. And an egg passes through the fallopian tube to the uterus, and it implants there. If it's fertilized, then you have the first cell of a new embryo, and the baby develops inside the uterus. Um, so every month, one egg passes through here, and there are about a million or so eggs. Um, so for a female, when she's a baby, she has about a million eggs, and then throughout her life, one egg at a time passes through every month to the uterus. Um, but all the eggs are developed uh, when she's a very young baby. And that's why sometimes there's more birth defects for women who have babies when they're in their late 30s, 40s, because over time, um, the DNA inside the eggs can change and that can produce more birth defects. And this is the last slide for um, this section. We'll just stop here for this one. So we went through all the body systems today. Um, so we finished 28.1. So for the rest of today, work on page 802 and do one through five. And then tomorrow we're going to go on to 28.2. Any questions about that? Okay, so just work on page 802, do questions one through five. Ms. Holly? Yes. Um, so really random question. When I cut, um, or when I get a scrape, like falling on concrete, and I bleed, would that bleeding draw out harmful bacteria? Oh, that's a good question. Um, most bacteria wouldn't be in your blood system. Um, if it were in your blood system, then you'd be in really bad shape. You'd have a really bad infection uh, they should be hospitalized for. Most bacteria stay out of your blood system. Um, so generally, you would not have bacteria in your system. 
Now you would have, you know, some toxins, some waste products in your blood. Um, so you might lose a little bit of, of those toxins and the waste products, um, but not a whole lot. Uh, most of the time your blood contains mostly good things, you know, nutrients, minerals, oxygen that your body needs. You're, you, just, you don't have a whole lot of toxins or waste in your blood. You have a little bit at a time, but usually not a whole lot. So yeah, the answer would be you'd have a little bit of waste you'd expel, but not a whole lot. And your body's so efficient, you don't ever have a whole lot of waste in your blood any one time. Uh, does it have any purpose except for the fact that you bur or dug into a vein and now it's just letting out blood? Yeah, it wouldn't help you. Like, you know, I know in olden days they would bleed people. You know, they thought that by bleeding people, you know, they would help them get over infection faster. Um, but nowadays we know that that won't really help. It only will just hurt the person. Um, for the most part, blood holds good things for us and we want to keep our blood in our body. And it usually is not helpful to bleed somebody to remove infection or bacteria. There would be certain cases when you want a blood transplant, um, but that would be pretty rare. And, uh, but that would be a really bad infection if you got to that point. And you'd be in really bad shape. You'd be in a hospital if you had a lot of bacteria in your blood. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Holly? Yes. Sorry, um, on number four, I don't know. Okay, so it says that a cell has undergone determination to become an endocrine gland cell. If it is transplanted to a leg muscle, what do you think will happen to the cell? So if it's undergone determination, um, what does that mean for the cell? So the cell has um, decided to become a certain cell. It's not reversible at that point. You know, so if it's determined to become, in this case, it's going to become endocrine clan cell, it can't change that. And so if you put it in a different place, it will still undergo that process of becoming that cell it was determined to be. And so it, it's not going to change what it was determined to be at that point. Okay. And then would the body like eventually just reject it or is it stay there? It probably would just die. You know, if it's not in the right environment, it probably would just die off on its own. Okay. That's not, it might become cancer if it keeps on multiplying, but most likely it, it would just die pretty fast if it's not in the right place. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.